Uh, I'll just start. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Farouk Tudlen. I'm a research software engineer at Netherlands Insight Center. Today, I'll be talking about how far is a tool that we developed at Insight Center. Um, <clears throat> yeah, before starting with the tool, I want to introduce you uh, uh, freesoftware.eu. This is a website launched uh, two years ago, I think. And uh, it was uh, launched by Netherlands eScience Center and Dance. And it has five simple recommendations about fair software. <clears throat> so I would like to go through those uh, recommendations uh, with you. And then uh, we can see how this is implemented in how far is. Um, the first recommendation we have in fairsoftware.eu is having a public cost repository and uh, making your software available to everybody. <clears throat> and the second recommendation is adding a license, especially a license with a uh, uh, with lot of permissions, a permissive license so that people can reuse the software, make modifications and distribute it again. And the, the third recommendation is about registering your code so that uh, you register your code in community registry, it becomes more findable by others. And the fourth one is enabling a citation for your software <clears throat> so that you can get uh, credit for the work that you did. And the final one is using a software quality checklist. This will eventually uh, and hopefully improve your uh, software quality. <clears throat> Um, well, now we know the recommendations, <clears throat> but there is still one, one question. How do I figure out which of these I am following? It's easy to uh, maybe judge for a single software, but if you have uh, more software uh, in, in a GitHub organization, for example, it becomes more difficult. That was the question we had at eSign Center. We have those recommendations, but we also have a lot of software. How can we check our own compliance with uh, facesoftware.eu? That was a difficult question to answer. And, and this is the reason why we started to work on how fair is. Uh, with the people you see on this screen, <clears throat> we started to develop how fair is. It is basically a Python package that can uh, go to your GitHub or GitLab repository, check your software's compliance with uh, facesoftware.eu. And um, in this session, I'll go over uh, some features, uh, usage of the software, and also hopefully I'll have a successful online demo. Uh, we will see this together. If you're interested to know more about uh, how fair is, this is the uh, GitHub repository. Do you see my mouse cursor? Um, and I will share the link. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is our GitHub repository. Please go and uh, visit it. You'll have uh, more information, documentation, and you can also uh, interact with us uh, via the GitHub repository. <clears throat> So when designing uh, how far is, uh, we paid attention to one thing, user friendliness. So we think instructions to install the software and to use the software should be uh, simple. Uh, you can install how far is with a single uh, pip command if you're familiar with uh, Python package manager. Uh, this is the command uh, you use to install packages. If you have a proper Python environment, you can just do pip install how far is, and then you have how far is installed. And this is going to install the latest version of how far is, which was released on the 9th of March. And okay, now I have how far is. How can I use it? <clears throat> it's also very simple. You go to command line. Uh, you type how far is, and then your GitHub repository. Uh, 
at the moment, Hafe is, is supporting GitLab and GitHub repositories. So um, you don't have to do anything extra. You can just uh, run it uh, either for GitHub or GitLab repository, and it will figure out which uh, infrastructure you're using. <laughs> and after running this command, you'll end up with uh, output like this. Um, so if you can, can you, can you read this? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, here we have five sections and each in each section, we have several checks, several items. <clears throat> so first one is repository. This is checking whether your repository is uh, public or not. Uh, obviously it's public, otherwise uh, you cannot run this, but you can also run it in public, rep uh, private repositories. License, whether it has a license, uh, you can also check the type of licenses, but uh, we, we especially didn't want to uh, include this. And then uh, how far is, is checking some um, extra badges. So these are all badges in your uh, readme file. It is basically checking your badges using uh, regular expressions. And if you have, for example, a conda badge, if you have a package on Anaconda for the software that you are checking the compliance, it will detect it and you'll have a check mark instead of a cross. And then citation, if you have a DOI <coughs> from a Zenoto or if you have a code meta file, a citation file, uh, then it will detect all of these and you'll have one extra check. And um, for the checklist, we only have a core infrastructure patch a check. Um, if you have any recommendations for this, uh, please let us know. And eventually your compliance is calculated like that. Uh, field circle means uh, uh, you're doing good. If it is empty, then uh, there is room for improvement. And then it gives you a small cost in a bit here, which is a batch you can add to your readme and show how compliant you are. Um, another way of using how far is, is <clears throat> via GitHub Actions. We have created a GitHub Action, which you can find in this, uh, in this link. Um, if you go to uh, this GitHub Action, you'll see that you have an example uh, configuration, which you can directly use in your GitHub repository, and it will be executed by uh, GitHub Action. <clears throat> and GitHub itself, it will run on GitHub in infrastructure, and then uh, your batch will be calculated. And eventually you'll have uh, one of those batches, depending on your compliance. And when you make more improvements, uh, then this, this uh, batch will also uh, change. <clears throat> um, now I would like to uh, do something dangerous live demo, uh, I would like to uh, use this GitHub action uh, to run it in one of the uh, repositories. <clears throat> and then I would like to add this generated batch to the readme file and show you how, how it works in practice. I'll, uh, I'll quickly move the other window I have. Can you, can you see this? <clears throat> thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes, thumbs up. Right, uh, this is a, a software called Garlic and developed by uh, one of my uh, uh, colleagues. <clears throat> this is a fork of uh, Garlic. Now I'm going to add GitHub action to this repository. If I go to actions tab, you'll see that I don't have any uh, actions here. As this is a fork, I, I need to uh, enable actions first. Okay, I have one action, this is unrelated. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll do this from scratch. Um, I gave you a link with an example of action. 
uh, I think Carlos will also paste this link in the chat if he can, or it will be in the shared document in any case. Uh, so this is the action that I want to add to my repository. I simply copy this and I go to my repository and there is a button here that says new workflow. I press this button. Here I have this hidden option says set up a workflow yourself. You can use one of the templates, but I would like to uh, set up my own uh, workflow. So I press this link. So I have a, a, a template that I can play with, but I would like to replace the content of this file with the, the example I copied. I simply pasted it. So uh, this is the uh, tricky line. And this is using uh, how far is action, GitHub action. So it, it created one file called main.yaml <clears throat> in my repository under .github folder, workflows folder, subfolder. And then uh, I'm going to commit this directly to master like a boss. All right. <clears throat> so now I have this action. How do I know this? I go to uh, actions. And I see that something is triggered. If I click on this fair software button and then this running action, see this is running for 14 seconds. I clicked again, right. I can see the progress here. <clears throat> yes, it worked nicely. So, uh, it first fetched uh, my repository, then did some checks, um, whether I have a public repository, whether I have a license, whether this code is registered in one of the community registries, whether I have citation CFF file or send the batch <coughs> or a core infrastructure batch. So this is the compliance I get. And at the end, I get this batch which I can simply copy and paste to my readme file. I do copy this line and if my network connection allows me to, yes. So I go to my <clears throat> readme file, I edit this. Well, I won't worry about uh, the content, but I will just paste the line I got from the action and then commit it. And as you can see, uh, I have the batch showing my compliance. So whenever uh, I have uh, changes in, in this repository, this action will be executed again, and then there will be a new calculation. Um, one, uh, one interesting uh, piece of information is this line. It is uh, every time you run this action, it's checking uh, your previous, uh, previous batch to see whether you have an improvement or not. <laughs> so uh, it was that simple. And uh, now I do have a challenge for you. Uh, I call it fair challenge. <clears throat> uh, it will be nice to see uh, your software's compliance as well. Don't worry if you get uh, one out of five, uh, doesn't matter what, what batch you get, but it would be nice if you can uh, repeat the same thing. And then we, we see whether this is actually really easy or not. It would be a good test for us to, to see whether the workflow is easy. Um, for this, you will need uh, some help. Um, first, um, if you have a software in mind, please 
uh, add this link to the uh, shared document uh, that that I think Carlos shared already. Carlos, do we do we have an access to? Yes, uh, most people are already in the document. Okay, so if you can add the repo story in in mind to this table, uh, it would be nice. Then you can uh, start doing the same thing as I did, adding this GitHub action. And then if you can report the compliance you got uh, from the GitHub action, it would be nice. If you can add the batch as well, it's perfect. So I'll be uh, around. We have about, I think, uh, 10 minutes, right, Carlos? Uh, we have about 10 minutes. Uh, so please take your time and I'll be around to help you if you need uh, my input, if you need any help. So I would like to have this a uh, bit uh, interactive session. Are there any questions? I cannot see the chat. There's a uh, Karina asked if, uh, is there any documentation as well for using it on gitlab.com? Um, it's, it's the same process. Well, for, the, for this demo, we didn't prepare anything for GitLab. This is a good point. Uh, you can, okay, I, I see another question. For, for Bitbucket, we don't have a support yet because uh, we couldn't find a lot of use cases. For, for GitLab, I recommend you uh, to install the tool via command line if you can, then run it on command line. It will be the same output. Pip install half is, then half is space your GitLab repository. It should just work. If not, I'm happy to I'm happy to help. <clears throat> Um, Can you show perhaps again how you call it from the command line? Let me see. <clears throat> so half a is then your uh, GitHub repository. And for GitLab it would be the same, right? Yes. I tried to. So you can also go to offer a GitHub repository, but it will be the same uh, same command. <clears throat> so we have an extensive uh, documentation. So this should this should work. <clears throat> so I oh sorry, there's a question from Valerio. Oh yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> I was wondering whether there is any um, way in which you can specify the, the branch on, on which to, to enable the, the GitHub action or if it goes directly to the main branch. Um, it goes to the default branch. Okay. But you can also specify the branch. And um, let me see. Here, if you use minus B Brilliant. or minus minus branch and branch name, it will also use the uh, branch you specify. Oh, you mean by the <laughs> command line? I was, I was yes, I, from the command line. Right, and I was going with the GitHub action actually. Uh, with GitHub action, it will use the default branch. Thank you. Perhaps this is a, a good input for us to, to consider. <clears throat> I think minus B help for me. Yay. 
one more successful run. I had a I had a build error when trying to install it using pip. Uh huh. So um, is there is there a Docker image or something that I could? Um, no, this is a Python package, but you can also use Docker image uh, if you want. If you can just replace Docker command, uh, how do I access the chat? I can't. I can't seem to install pip. I uh, can't seem to install how fair it is. Uh, do you have Do you have Docker? Um, Anything yeah. else? Well, if you have Docker, you can run this command in the chat. Okay. And if you run it with help, you can see all the options. It's also documented nicely. Wow, we have quite some repositories already. I don't think it's my day. My on Mac, it's giving me a segmentation violation for for Docker. Should install it. Um, what kind of error did you get with pip? Uh, it said that cannot uninstall Uamo Yamo. It's in dist utils. It must be something about my installation. It's okay. I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> uh, well, for you, it's okay. For me, not. Uh, okay. How about how about you create an issue in our GitHub uh, GitHub repository? Will do. I'll do that now. I'll I'll be very happy to help you after the session. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, I also have some, some issues, but um, I'm running Windows since yeah uh -huh. we have this unfortunately for work. And um, right, it installed nicely. So I did have an issue there. It's when I run it, it doesn't find the readme, but I'm kind of surprised um, because it's in there. Um, and um, I also wrote it in the chat, but I just get like small gray boxes. So as, uh, as a status, no, no real symbol, but just a, always the same gray box. I think it's something. Okay. Was running this in the uh, git bash under under windows which, which repository was it can you share the repository so um the repos in the chat it's um uh, but i think that so it's i had to give it the branch because i'm ah. not sure if it's default is uh defined so this worked i gave it um the check final results one um okay uh, but my output looks a little bit, so it looks nearly as but the status, which should be before in front of the checks. There's just a great yeah. check out, check out a box um, for all of those. So, so it is because, um, let me show you workshops. No, I messed it up. It's because you also have a subfolder. You have ah. a path. You have a path. Uh, for this, uh, we have uh, another argument that you can use to define a path. So you can have a one repository with several software in it, uh, which is sometimes not ideal, but uh, it, it can happen, right? You can also say, hey, go to get uh, go to this repository, but don't use the repository root, but instead just take this uh, folder into consideration. But and, it's a separate repository. It's just in GitLab, you can have subgroups and groups. So yeah, you can yeah, have yeah. an iterative <laughs> process. Yeah, this is a, I think a bit exceptional case. 
but I'll, I'll create an issue about this. Yeah, yeah it's, it, I know this is different from GitHub where you can't have this, um, but the GitLab we use this extensively. So um. yeah, we, we, we also support GitLab, but we uh. didn't have a lot of uh, use cases. We didn't have uh, a lot of users from GitLab so that uh, we are, I think, uh, missing some of the issues. Yeah, yeah it's, it's no problem. I just thought it, it would be great if you implement it. I'm also happy to, to yeah. write a request for that. It's just that it's not completely unusual what we did here, like um, for, yeah. for GitLab, but it's fine if you don't have it yet in there. That's totally fine. Can, can I kindly ask you to create an issue? Yeah, yeah, I'll do so after this. Thank you very much. Um, can, we, can you for now tell me like how I give the path? Because I would love to check it out if it. Yeah, it should be minus p. So. Uh, oh yeah. Do half a is minus p, and then or minus minus path. You say go to this subfolder and uh, check it there. Don't use okay. the uh, root of the repo. Sorry. Hey. Could you could you um, explain a little bit more how you check for the the last um, the last point the, out of the five the kind of like the quality checklist or the kind of like integration testing? Um, the, uh, I, had, I had to look at the yeah. <laughs> none of the kind of like listed repositories seem to seem to have gotten the last the last kind of like dot out of the five. Yes. Even, even though many of them have kind of like, you know, Travis continuous integration or other continuous integration badges on their readme. Yeah, this is a core infrastructure batch. Uh, core infrastructure has its own best practices batch. Uh, you need to go here, sign up, then you'll have uh, tons of questions to answer uh, to, to see where you are. And then you need to add this batch to your repository. And how far is will recognize this uh, this batch? Lots of uh, resource software don't have uh, this uh, this batch, uh, but perhaps you're using another an, another uh, quality check, another checklist. This this is also fine. Uh, but uh, some of them are quite difficult to judge because you have a checklist in a markdown file. And there is no way to, to measure whether you're following a checklist or not. <clears throat> or maybe you have internal checklist, quality checklist. So this is still um, uh, difficult to assess. The best thing we could assess was uh, CII batch. And that's why we have it there. Okay. Cool, thank you. Oh, okay. yep. can, can I can I add something to that, Farouk? So yes, I guess please. the the point is that at the moment we only check automatically for mm -hmm. the CII uh, best practices batch. Uh, but if you have a different uh, mm -hmm. checklist and you're uh, doing that checklist in a separate way with your uh, continuous integration test or so <clears> for that, and that's uh, good enough for you, then uh, you can also add an, an, an exception, right? That you can, you can tell how far is in this repo. I have manually checked my, that I uh, that I comply with an, an, another uh, continuous, uh, sorry, best practices uh, by, uh, list. So I think uh, Farouk is looking for an example. Yes. We, we, we have this, so you you can say, okay, for my uh, fifth check, I've done <clears> it <throat> separately, and um, I I want to ignore the CIA badge because I have this other check. And yes, exactly. So uh, you can have a configuration file for half a s in case you want to skip one of the checks with or without reason. You can use this configuration file. And it, next time it won't uh, do this extra check. So instead of five, it will take four or three. Uh, yes, there is a question. Sharp for me. Uh, well, the session time's up. Yes. We can answer maybe another question uh, and then we need to get back to the main room. And, uh, yep. Thank Are you. Are there any other questions? I have, a, I have a small question. Um, do you do you check that the license? Uh, do you check which license is it that is being assigned, or do you just check that, that there is a license? A license? 
we check uh, if there is a license. Uh, we do this via GitHub API, but uh, it can also be extended to check what kind of license you have. Right. Well, the, the problem that I've seen um, with GitHub API only is that sometimes there is an inconsistency between, for example, what author states in the README file versus what they actually state yes. in the repository. Yes. So, um, yeah. Just well, we use GitHub API for this. If GitHub does not know it, uh, we cannot detect it. Mm -hmm. But in case if you have any uh, uh, bugs or new ideas, please uh, contact us uh, via this email or uh, go to our GitHub repository. We'll be more than happy to help you. <clears throat> I think this is the end of the session. Uh, well, thank you very much for your attention and uh, let's keep in touch. Thanks very much. A uh, round of uh, applause for the uh, for Farouk and Carlos for their session. Thank you.